We begin this special three-part report with the author of Diet Evolution, Dr. Stephen Gundry of Desert Regional Medical Center in Palm Springs. He explains what your body is thinking and tells you why your genes actually want you to be fat, even sick. Well, the name of the book is Dr. Gundry's Diet Evolution. Turn off the genes that are killing you and your waistline and lose the weight for good. And I wrote the book uh, to try and deliver the message that I was delivering on a daily basis to patients who would seek me out from really around the country to try to turn their health around. I was a, a fat, obese heart surgeon with prediabetes and hypertension and high cholesterol. And I'm famous for operating on people who nobody else wants to. And when I was chairman at uh, Loma Linda University uh, eight years ago, I was referred a young man um, who I affectionately call Big Ed, uh, who was 48 years old and had inoperable heart disease. Every one of his blood vessels was clogged up. You couldn't put stents through them. You couldn't put bypasses over them. And he had been going around the country for six months with his angiogram, the movie of his heart that showed all these blockages, trying to get, convince somebody to help him. And I looked at his angiogram, and I, like everybody else, said, gee, you know, I'd love to help you, but it's not going to do any good. And he said, well, that's what everybody else has said, but in the six months since my angiogram, I've gone on a diet, and I've lost 45 pounds. And I went to a health food store, and I bought this big bag of supplements. And he said, maybe I did something in here. What would it hurt to get another angiogram? Well, you know, I'm stroking my professor beard and patting my big belly. And I said, good for you for losing weight, but that's not going to do anything here. And I can tell you what you did with all those supplements. You just made expensive urine. You wasted your money. And he said, well, what would it hurt to get another angiogram? I said, okay. Well, in six months' time, this guy had cleaned out half the blockages in his heart. Gone. I'd never seen anything like it, never been described, but there I had two films, six months apart. Same guy, all he did was lose weight and take a bunch of supplements. And I was so amazed, I said, give me that bag of supplements. And I started looking through these things. And a lot of the things he was using, I was using in the laboratory intravenously to keep hearts alive for over 24 hours for my heart transplant program. So as the ultimate anti-supplement guy, I started taking a large amount of supplements and I put myself on the diet that I had designed years ago. We asked Dr. Gundry about this experience. What motivated him to write the book? I actually resurrected the thesis that I wrote as an undergraduate at Yale on human evolutionary biology. And there it was. You know, this is how we were designed to talk to our genes. And I mean, there's now an entire science of this called epigenomics. And it's not what genes you're dealt, but it's the information you give those genes through the foods that you eat that turn those genes on or turn those genes off. And sure enough, uh, in the first year I lost 50 pounds. Within a couple of months, my cholesterol had fallen 150 points. More importantly, my good cholesterol, which was very low at 32, went up to 80. And I was told that's impossible. My blood pressure, which used to run 145 over 95, went to 90 over 50. And my insulin level, which used to run at 16 to 18, went to 2. And that's just not me. I started all my uh, nurses on the program, the same thing happened. And I started my patients who I operated on, and the same thing happened. And now, four days a week, all I do is teach people how to stay away from me. And the wonderful thing is, if they don't listen, I operate on them, and then they get the message. We'll return with more of Dr. Stephen Gundry's book, Diet Evolution. In this next follow-up segment with Dr. Gundry, he explains why our genes are trying to kill us. What's happened to us in America and now around the world is that we were designed to run a, a particular fuel. And that fuel gives information to our genes that tell our genes where we are in time, what we're up to, whether we're a good animal, whether we're an animal that ought to be gotten rid of. And that fuel has changed in the last 50 years. It's changed dramatically without us knowing it. 
50 years ago, a cow was raised on grass. A chicken was out in the back of a hen house pecking at bugs and grass. Now, almost 100% of our beef is fed grain products. 100% of our chickens are fed grain products. Three quarters of our fish are farm raised on grain products. Turns out the fats in those animals bear no relationship to the fats that they used to have. That we were actually designed to eat large amounts of leaves. We share 98% of our genes with chimps and gorillas. A male gorilla eats 16 pounds of leaves every day. He's 400 pounds of pure muscle. His body fat is 3%. And he got all his protein for building those muscles from eating leaves. And what we're finding is there are all sorts of unusual little chemicals in plants called phytonutrients or phytochemicals. Phyto means plant. That our genes are looking for because they've been looking for them for millions of years because they've always been there. And what happened is, if we don't get them, if those don't stimulate our genes, our genes actually assume that we're a really lousy creature and that we ought to be disposed of. And most of the things that happen to people that we assume are just a process of getting old, like arthritis, like high blood pressure, like heart disease, like diabetes, like cancer, are actually a product of a very sophisticated genetic computer system that says, you know, this guy shouldn't be kept around or this woman shouldn't be kept around and we're going to find a way to get rid of him. I used to have a lot of uh, little skin tags, uh, little benign skin tags uh, on my neck, under my armpits, down in my groins, and you'd burn them off and the dermatologist says, eh, that's benign. I noticed as a heart surgeon that most of the people I was operating on had skin tags. As I started to do the diet on myself, that all my skin tags fell off. They dried up. They literally dried up and they fell off. And I said, well, that's very odd. So I started researching where skin tags come from. And they actually come from insulin excess, a hormone that we think of as controlling blood sugar. Turns out that most of us who have health problems have elevated levels of insulin. And one of the scary things about insulin is that it's also a growth hormone. And as we get older, there are very few things left in us that we should have growing. One of them is skin. And one of them is the inside lining of our intestines. Just last week, I had a patient who we got their insulin level, uh, which was very high. It was about 18, should be less than 10. And I said, have you ever had any colon polyps removed? She said, I just had my colonoscopy last week, and they took out a couple of benign polyps and told me not to worry. I said, guess what? Those polyps were from your insulin acting like miracle Grow." And if you think those guys are getting stimulated by insulin, there's plenty of other little cancer cells running around you that this is acting like miracle Grow." And we're beginning to find out that this is all interconnected. If you have heart disease, the odds are you're going to have a knee or hip replaced because you have arthritis. They're actually related. The leading cause of death from someone who survives cancer is heart disease. The leading cause of death of someone who survives heart disease is cancer. These are not mistakes. These are not, isn't that interesting? These are all related. And the really wonderful thing is you can pretty much stop it and turn it around by giving your genes the information that you're actually a pretty doggone good animal and you ought to be kept around. Now back to Dr. Stephen Gundry of Desert Regional Medical Center in Palm Springs as he continues to discuss his book, Diet Evolution, and what you can do to turn off the killer genes. Specifically, what can people do? Well, as I've been mentioning before, we're designed to eat green things. So the more green stuff you eat, the leaner you will get and the healthier you will get. Most people are shocked with how much better they feel the more salads they eat, the more green vegetables they eat. The second thing is, if it's white, you keep it out of sight. What does that mean? It means milk. It means ground up grain products like flour, rice, potatoes, uh, soy milk, crackers, 
those sorts of white foods uh, are actually a very new food in our diet. Correspondingly, if you bake or cook a white food, it becomes a beige or a brown food. So if it's beige or brown, slow down. Uh, the less of beige and brown foods that people eat, the better their health is going to be. Uh, there's some other easy things. Believe it or not, we're only designed to take fruit and turn it into fat in the summer to get ready for winter. And one of the startling things that I've found is that diabetics should stay away from fruit at all costs. Anyone who's got a gut, anyone who's got this cute little pot belly, stay away from fruit. In other words, give fruit the boot. I ask people to stop fruit for two weeks and they're amazed at how much weight they lost and it all comes out of their belly. Most of the people's high cholesterol is coming not from fat, not from trans fat, not what they've been told, but by white foods and fruit turning into cholesterol. And I am just amazed on how people's cholesterol plummet when they eliminate what seems to be the healthy foods. And people, they come back, they say, I feel well, you know, I haven't felt this way in so long. And it, it's, you know, you, your, your, your genes are looking for this stuff. And, you know, we're feeling bad because our genes are actually trying to get our attention and say, you know, we're going to have to kill you if you keep this up.